And welcome, everybody, to the episode 24 of Mac Yak, our 24th episode. We're getting up there. Woo! So Ooh, yeah! We got, uh, it's probably going to be a short night tonight. We've got only four of us here out of the six, uh, so we're missing a couple of folks. Uh, one of the folks we're missing is because of a death in the family. Um Greg Rutke's dad passed away last week, and uh, they just had the memorial service yesterday. Uh, so let me go ahead. Uh, I'm going to post a picture up here so you guys can see. This is Greg and his dad. Uh, Send all your love and prayers. Yep. Uh, he was, uh, I'll just read off the obituary here. He was born in 1959. Uh, he has uh, two sons, I believe. Greg and hold on, I'm trying to read down here. Another one, uh, Charles uh, Rutke. I don't know if that's Greg's older or younger brother. I don't know. To be well, honest unfortunately, with you. he couldn't be here to explain. So yeah, so uh, yeah, Greg is still either driving back or he is uh, still grieving. So you know, just basically send your thoughts and prayers to uh, to Greg there. Uh, he he needs them right now. So. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot to uh, a lot to shuffle right now. So. Oh yeah. It's yeah thank be a you. Rough time, but he has yeah, thank a, you, Noah. Uh, a very large family in Mackiac and all the communities that we're all in. So shoot him a message, send your love. You know, it's a tough time. Please, definitely. Yep. Yeah. Alrighty, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and start getting into some of our topics tonight. Uh, first off, uh, well, actually, first off, uh, what's up? What's been up with you guys lately? The last week or so. I know last week we did the UT uh, <laughs> Unreal Tournament version of Mac yep. Yak. Uh, I thought that went off pretty good. Uh, I had I think fun. We... I just did not prepare for any yakking at all. I just <laughs> put up my game face and started blasting. <laughs> well, you were blasting tell. us all because I think you won the most the, the most <laughs> rounds there. So you and uh, Steve there. Well, Steve was smack talking, so I had to do so. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you had to. So, but that's but, guys. That's what we do over on PPC Gaming Lounge. So if you. Uh, if you have a chance, come and check it out. I mean, we have fun playing Unreal Tournament uh, on these old Macs. Um, so come and check it out. Jay runs a server twenty four seven. So speaking of which, Jay, you need to turn robot. You need to turn bots back on on it because I went to go <laughs> test the other night and <laughs> nothing to shoot. Just have one of us, you know, ping one of us. We'll jump in. Target yeah, practice. there you go. <laughs> yeah, I like uh, I I much prefer playing with real players only. Yeah, I know. But, yeah, it, but it, I'll put it, I'll put it back on. The, the re- <laughs> I, I I had a lot of fun doing the stream. I don't know about you guys, but I mean it was I did. It was very different, of course, than what we usually do. Um, and of course, like like Jay mentioned, it was kind of hard to actually think about the topics and respond because you're you know you're in the game trying to hunt down people and do this and that. So yeah, you know, that was. That was yeah. that was fun. I mean, that was a, it was a good uh, it was a good mix up, I guess. Of multitasking is not way. really my strong suit. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't get into <laughs> the talking not, much. Either. I did not hear Rocky So says the top of the leaderboards. I was at the bottom <laughs> of the leaderboard. I was the only one keeping up with the topics. <laughs> yes, well, you were. I couldn't well. hear you. See, Your audio was gone. <laughs> what? It showed. Oh. <laughs> it showed you can't multitask either. You can only do. Nope. Topics or game? <laughs> I chose game. <laughs> I can say that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we had, uh, I forgot, I put it on Facebook, but we had uh, quite a few people there playing with us. Uh, we had Nick mm-hmm. and Dana uh, on the James stream. James came in. Yeah. James, James. was there. Uh, uh, your others. wife was in there. Jay. Yep. Uh, Rocky's daughter was in there. Yeah, she came in. Yep. Yep. We, we didn't see Brock, though. He needs to get his butt in there. Yep. He talks a lot on Discord, but he don't. He, he's not showing up, you know. I didn't yeah. really see Jake Come either. On, bro. Yeah, we didn't see. Yeah, you're right. We didn't see Jake. So. Yeah, I did. I do have to. I did recordings of those games. I have to play them back and 
uh, screen cap them and put them somewhere. That might be fun from a different perspective. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you from, go. From me being killed as well. So, <laughs> so anything else going times on that happened? Yeah. Anything else going on with you guys? Uh, last I've, couple of I've weeks. I've had a busy week, man. I've just been soldering, sleeping, eating, soldering. Hopefully sleeping, not eating, sleeping and while you're soldering. That's yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. Uh, then suddenly a sharp pain will wake me up. But, uh, Ow! No, it's, it's just been busy, man. I I just finished mowing the lawn like half an hour before the stream started. I just didn't have time to prepare at all. <laughs> no, but we're gonna make do with what we got here. Oh yeah, yeah. we'll wait. Now up. my riding tractor is dead, so me mowing the the lawn because our riding lawnmower <laughs> is also dead. Our lawn oh. looks like a forest. It's like you know that tall, and I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm thankful there's not too much to lawns. Uh, to, Five to acres, wow. too much yeah. to mow. But you well, come I'm, to my house? not near that. No, no, nothing near the near. Uh, I can't speak today. Whoa. Nothing nearly that much for me. Oh, well, come on, you guys, bring your you guys... bring your riding lawnmower and come out to my house. It's only you know what, what, what four riding hours lawnmower? <laughs> my lawnmower has an extension cord on it. That's how fancy Jesus I am. Christ. Well, you guys, you guys should come out here to Arizona then. We don't have grass. We have rocks. Yes. <laughs> oh, bite me with your new chair. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can uh, groom your lawn with a rake. There you go. That, <laughs> that'll be your rake. That's right. <laughs> that's a bonsai lawn. You know, very spiritual. So, right. <laughs> All right. <Zen>. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get into our first topic tonight. It was one I was talking to the guys about. <laughs> that showed up in on Facebook. Uh, I think Retro Re- Recipes or, or Perry Fatrick or whatever his name is. Perry Fract- uh, or Polyfract. Perry Fracton. Yeah. <laughs> can None of you can speak yeah. tonight. He, he does Retro <laughs> Recipes. Okay, He's got his own YouTube channel. And he came on one of the Mac groups talking about discharging uh, the CRTs on the old, like the old Mac SE30s and stuff. Okay. A lot of people have different opinions on how you should properly discharge it. Some people say plug it into the mains and discharge it, which I say oh. is dumb, stupid, and no. you might as well sign your oh, own death warrant if you do that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Look it. Look it. <laughs> yeah. The reason why some people say to do that is because they say, well, the ground prong is, is ground there. Yeah, but you still have 110 volts or 220, depending on what country you're in, <laughs> oh, yeah. going – Still to the, you know, uh, to charge it up because that that charge capacitor is still charging. Mm -hmm. Don't ever plug anything in when you're working on CRTs. No. Um, The second thing is 30,000 volts, if I remember right, or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, at least 10,000. It's not not really the volts that kill you. It's the amps. The amps amps is what will kill you. uh, Did I lose the stream or is it just my internet? Just your internet. internet. (laughs) <laughs> okay. It says excellent oh, condition. Hold on. So, so Rocky's going to lick it live on, on the stream here. Oh, Actually, is that, did Steve Jobs lick that sat. one? sat. Uh, not yet. But um, <laughs> it is. it has sat for about a week, so probably the capacitors are discharged. And I still like, not. But I'm still I, not going to. Yeah. <laughs> even, <laughs> put it this way, even if the mm. if it's been sitting for a week or two weeks or whatever, I would still discharge. Oh, definitely. Yeah. The uh, better safe than sorry. Yeah. Uh, and myself, the proper way to discharge it, I would do it is you plug, you take a screwdriver, you take a alligator clip wire to the nope. grounding to the frame of the computer. Hold on, let me grab then, my multimeter. Then you put the screwdriver up underneath. You know I am not, where the not an, yeah underneath. the anode is. And you discharge it that way. A lot of people say you should ground it to um, a grounding rod or something you know, to the earth ground. Recommend it doesn't matter because basically you just need to make a circuit going from the capacitor's negative to the positive. That's all you got okay. to do to discharge it. Hold on, let's let's test this on my uh, SE. Be careful, Rocky. <laughs> yeah, don't. We don't I want have, to sit there and watch this I'm not a ding live. bat. I have a multimeter. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm going to dial 9 1. Use your I finger. Would not... It's more reliable. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Okay. So tell me, 
we're talking case ground, which, by the way, the power supply is right here. So, okay, you can't see it on stream. No, we can't. My bad. Be careful. Sorry. He just okay. dropped us. <laughs> yeah, I did. I'm old. Get explosion. over it. Okay. You see that? Did it? Okay, that worked. All right, you see that right there? Grounding yep. pin mm -hmm. right there to the power yep. supply. Mm -hmm. So that's earth ground, technically. That's why you put your ground, ground on anywhere's, it. You could ground it anywhere on the, the case. I agree. The actual metal now, case. Now, where's the hot on your CRT so we can help the okay. viewers out there? You see where that pl that plug is right there on the side that's got a big rubber thing on it? This one? The red yeah, one? Yeah, you got to go underneath it. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. Yeah, you're going to violate gonna, it. <laughs> I didn't, dude, you're, you're, oh, you're going to burn up your multimeter. <laughs> yeah, be careful, dude. <laughs> got it set to 220. We're all good. No, 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 no. It's uh -uh. on volts. It's three dude, volts. I'm telling you, it's you're not the blow volts. It. It's the it's, current. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna it's blow, gonna your blow it up. Meter. Okay, ten thousand. Then <laughs> we're fine. Okay, you got to reach it's a night there, meter. It's not a and one. there's a piece of metal that goes in there. That's the reason why you got that big rubber cap is to protect you from getting from touching that. Like that, I've shoved it all the way in, like a boss. This is hard Look to watch. <laughs> there you go. There's your volts on mine. Yeah. What is that? At 10,000 DC right now. So what is that? 25. 25 on the volts for DC right now. Hmm. In the 10,000 DC range. All right. Yeah, no. don't look it. <laughs> now. <laughs> oh, come on. Yum, yum, yum. So I mean, it still has a charge on it. That's 25 volts, Probably. right? According to the meter. I don't think it's accurate, though, because I can pull it off. And it still reads the same. <laughs> so basically, it's not. It's an expensive it's, night read, night freaking thing too. It's an expensive one. So anyway, well, you yeah, paid too that's much how for you're it. supposed to do it. Huh? <laughs> yeah. No, so, that's not. That's how not how. To do it. <laughs> that is not how you discharge. That is not how you discharge it. You take you a screwdriver. Me. No, I said you take a <laughs> screwdriver with an alligator clip. You with the other end of the alligator clip, you clip that to your. To the metal part of your Mac, you clip the other alligator clip to the screwdriver. You take the screwdriver and jimmy it underneath until you can touch, and you make sure that it discharges that way. We're Touch all the metal parts the electric electric here, so you and can electrocute yourself. It's all good. No, you won't electrocute yourself <laughs> because you got a big touch. The metal part. <laughs> okay, unless you're not trying to that has a metal handle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because the the alligator clip clips onto your wrist, right? Uh, depends oh, on what yeah, you're there using. you go. <laughs> Are you talking about the, you know, the actual, you know, proper, like I should have been a, uh, what is that called? A app somewhere in my toolkit. Uh, what's it called? Oh, it's, let's say it's a glove that's basically just rubber, big, thick rubber. And glove. you can wear it, but you don't really need that to be honest with you. If you do this. it the proper way. No, you don't want to wear one of those. <laughs> no, no, no. You do not use that. That, that would, uh, a grounding clip? Help you. That would, that All right. would alligator. Uh, an uh, alligator clip on both from a what wire I with alligator clips on. The way I was taught and the way I've always done it, you have a big long hand, long screwdriver with a plastic handle. Yes. To that is attached a wire. That wire on the other end clips to the frame of the computer. Yep. You yep. put one hand behind your back or on top of your head or wherever the hell it is. Just not that's true. It. Then you poke that thing in underneath that rubber cap until you hear a pop, a fizz, whatever. Then it's discharged. As long as you feel that you're actually touching that metal in there, you're good. Not with your own now, hand. Now, what I do, I also ground the frame to the earth ground. It's not required, but it's an extra safety that I put on there because I'm comfortable with it. And I, I don't have a problem with people doing that, but you don't need to. But like you just said, it's it's do it. Yeah. So how would you how would you ground that to the earth ground? Then you have the alligator clip going to the Pray. case, and then then what happens from that? From there, I have an alligator clip that goes to a ground uh, a grounding mat or something that's okay. connected to the ground in the outlet. Okay. Cool. So. Yeah, but don't I'm, listen to some of these people that we saw on there saying plug it into the mains. Yeah, that oh, yeah. don't do. No, do not, don't do that. Never, never work on CRTs 
with the power plug. Yeah. Never that, work on anything while it's plugged. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, 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 that's asking that's, for trouble. Yeah. Now, I want it noted for all the viewers before they start criticizing me for doing what I was doing. Actually, I was using... And that... You're plugged breaking up, Well, Rob. sorry. That SE has not been plugged in for months, so it's actually quite discharged. <laughs> it's at zero right at the moment, so... Well, okay. Or 25, who knows? Noah said ESD yeah, yeah. wristband. No, you nope. do not use an ESD um, wristband on that. You do want to use an ESD wristband to prevent the, the no, factor. No, no, if, if it's no, on your hand, no. you know what it does, mm-hmm. though? No. If it is properly grounded, it will protect you from getting shock over your heart. No, no, no. no, no that's, that's why you have your other hand behind your back. Exactly. You okay. do not want an ESD strap. To you while you're discharging a CRT, you're killing me, just going to put the electricity to you. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> you want it away from you, not to you. Especially okay. because if you take an ESD strap, it's usually to earth ground, and the, if yes. you do it the way that Jay says to do it, guess what? <laughs> then you're going to get yeah, you're going to get some of that shock. <laughs> but it's going to go all into the ESD strap on the same hand that's touching it, and it's going to go straight to earth ground. Uh, Which is what no, it's supposed to be it's doing. Going, no, it's going the right ESD. No, no, no. The ESD strap is only made for electronic components so that you don't damage electronic components. Yes, that is also that true. is what the ESD strap is for. Not Rocky. For I'm worried about you, man. <laughs> I'm worried about you. I use an ESD strap all the time, but okay. So, well, no, no. I will. I will. Yeah, don't discharge what you guys are CRT? saying on it, though. I don't discharge CRTs. I haven't done that for do years. You wear, so. Do you wear a wrist strap while you work on equipment that is plugged into power? I never work on equipment plugged into power. Okay, okay, good. About? So what you're saying is you use a wrist strap while you're working on electronics. Not yes. while it's plugged in and not while you're discharging no. a CRT. Hence why he's still breathing right now. Probably. Then why do you bring it up and confuse us all? <laughs> I'm just making... I want to make a point, though, because there are going to be people that are going to say that. They're going to go... Wait a minute! It's supposed to discharge. I'm trying to be the devil's advocate here, so I'm helping. Uh huh. <laughs> now I'm gonna get razzed about it for the next month. All right, we're good. <laughs> That's all right. We love you anyway. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to read some of the chat here. Uh, Neo says he hasn't used a CRT. Haven't used in years. That's still charged. Yeah, I mean, I have a iMac G3 in my closet that. It hasn't been turned on in months, but if I had to work on it, I would probably still, you know, discharge the CRT before doing anything on it. Uh, I'll tell you, my my father had the big twenty one inch studio display CRT, the, you know, the graphite one from back in the day with the, some of the G four towers. Yeah, it's dead, so stop booing. Oh, good. <laughs> and uh, he brought it to um, a TV repair shop because it was doing that Degauss thing and screwing up. And when they discharged that, because they did it in the back, you heard a pop. Like it was, it was pretty loud because that thing yeah. was huge. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah, I you'll have, hear. Uh, I have an EMAC and an iMac G3. Um, I want to take them apart, but I don't like working on CRTs. They make me nervous. So if yeah, I can avoid I. them, I will. <laughs> so. Yeah, thankfully with the iMac G3s, most of the stuff you need to tinker with is on the bottom. So you mm-hmm. really don't even have to touch the CRT. You can, the EMAC is a little different because everything you have to sort of open it up to get to it besides the RAM or yeah. the CD drive you know, for the airport card. But yeah, the iMac G3s, I feel pretty comfortable around. Now, even the SEs and the SE30s, at least, I don't know about the classics, but you can, the whole board comes out without ever getting near the CRT Yeah, that's, that's true because I, I, t- I took in four uh, classic, classic two machines, which the CRTs and the cases are still in the garage, but I took out all the logic boards from it. And I was just very careful not to touch any part of the CRT. I was being overly cautious, but, you know, just, you know, that's a good way to do it. Yes. <laughs> now, isn't the board on? Because I know this was asked in the uh, Discord on Mac Yak. Isn't the board because I only own an SE, which is comparable to an SC thirty. Um, the board is on the bottom, and then the board for the power. Of course, the power is contained in a separate unit, and then it has the board for all of the power distribution that's required for the CRT and the management for it is on a board that goes along the side. So is that the same way on a classic? That if you just avoid those boards, 
you're yeah, pretty much yeah, I safe. Think, I think it's the same on the Classic. I mean, I took it apart a few years ago, but the, the logic board is on the bottom of the machine, and you could easily take that out with the hard drive and the floppy drive without touching anything. It's very tight in there. you got to be careful, but yeah, yeah, it can be done. Okay. Kind of like the on the like you were saying the G the iMac G threes they're the same thing that the board comes out separate from the CRT and all of its power circuitry. Well, I mean even the SEs the 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 analog board and the logic board are two separate boards. I mean, and mm-hmm. you could pull technically you could get the logic board. I can board show you that I have one without you know even touching the CRT, mm-hmm. uh, but. Uh, I still prefer to discharge it because you've still got to get your hand in there to get what the, the, the power cable and the cable going to the analog board. Now, it there's was only two cables. On the, yeah, I know. That's why I said the, there's a power uh, cable and then the uh, analog. It's all no. in one, actually. And then power the, cable and then the, the floppy cable. SCSI, the SCSI yeah. cable. Yeah. It was mentioned in, the, in that Facebook discussion that more modern CRTs, have discharge capacitors in it. I don't oh, know really? if that applies to any of the Mac products, though, because I don't know enough about CRTs. Well, to, I, don't know. I don't know if you've ever seen some of the older monitors, the CRT monitors, where they had the degauss in them. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Where you hit the little button and the screen just goes, yep. you know, kind of degauss. Well, yeah. yeah, all that is, basically, it's not discharging anything, of course, but uh, the degauss, all it does is it takes it's puts a magnetic charge to basically demagnetize around the, the where the, the guns are, the electron Yeah, some guns. people get that confused and think, oh, I just, I degaussed it, it's fine. It's like, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's, that's a totally different thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and this, uh, this is just us talking. If you're watching this, uh, don't take our word for it. Watch some videos on YouTube from people with credentials that know what they're doing and if you can't find any of that or if you find conflicting information go to a local repair shop or call an electrician and they will tell you how to do it do you yeah there's work? still there's still a lot of tv repair shops at least where i am there's one or two that do appliance repair too and you know those guys have been around and seen a lot so it never hurts to pick their brain about it yeah and if it's something like an se you know you can even put it in your car take it with you and have them do it you know, yeah. give, give them five bucks, they'll discharge it for you. And, yeah, most you know, of all, just be safe. It's a piece of electronic equipment. It's not worth risking your, your health over. Yeah, exactly. And CRTs are extremely dangerous. I don't care what anybody thinks or says. They are. Apple actually spent, I was a, I got certified the last time in, what was it, 2007, 2008, for an Apple certification. And CRTs are so dangerous that in that time period, which was many years after Apple had stopped using them, Apple was still requiring CRT safety certification before they let anybody be certified on Apple products at that time. Oh, yep. wow. Same, same for me. I started in uh, 2009, and they were still – it was a huge part of their training and, uh, and instructions and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. That is dangerous. You're talking, what, 60, 30,000 volts going right through your body and just shocking the crap out of your heart. So don't do Not it. Good. Yeah. All right, guys, let's go ahead and move on to our next topic here. Um, let's see. Uh, new website here, Jay, and it's got to be all on you here. So I'll let you take the helm on this one. Yes. So there is a new website. It's still under construction. Uh, I have no idea how long it's going to take before it's done. But it is called knownappleissues.com, and it's going to list – Every documented or undocumented by Apple uh, hardware fault. So if there if there was an issue that had a repair program like the Nvidia graphics chips failing on MacBook Pros and any of that stuff, um, that will be listed, and that's an, a known issue. But there's also plenty of issues that Apple never acknowledged, and still to this day didn't acknowledge, including current hardware with known issues that apple will not tell you about cool that's what known apple issues is going to mention so uh hey greg is here hey greg see you yeah. in the chat um the my website apple serial number info.com is going to link two articles on 
knownappleissues.com. So if you pull up a serial number and it happens to be hardware that has a known hardware issue, it will show a link to that website. So hopefully that'll help people, uh, you know, if, if they're in the market for a used Mac or they're having issues and Apple can't figure it out or they keep refurbishing it with the same garbage, hopefully they can figure out what's going on and either not buy a used Mac that might have a, a hardware issue that cannot be fixed or is very hard to fix or, you know, work around. 2011 Mac Pro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? 2011 MacBook Pro. <laughs> yeah. Or any yeah. MacBook Pro past 2017. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I would love to have a 2011 MacBook Pro 17 inch, but if I need to disable the graphics card, what's the point? That graphics chip is the whole value of the machine. It's not the processor. Mm-hmm. It's not the screen size. <laughs> it's the graphics. You know, if, if you have a 17 inch that you have to operate with integrated graphics, no. It's, it's a useless product at that point. But, uh, yeah, keep an eye on that website. It should be, uh, as far as I know, it should be done in the next few weeks. And cool. it will continue. It will go, uh, it will focus on current and the last decade or so hardware first. And then it's going to start working its way back. So we're going to go back all the way to... Uh, the Apple from, One, from what I believe, if it has <laughs> no, if it has known issues and we can find documentation on it, it's going to be on there. And uh, you know the the CRT, the the Apple Cinema Display or Studio Display that Steve mentioned, that had a known issue, uh, and documentation was found on that issue, so that's going to be on there. Yeah, cool. So uh, keep an yeah. eye on that and uh, spread the word. Now, yeah, what about I'm, things that aren't included by Apple? Let's say, for instance, the 2010 MacBook Pros, the 2008 MacBook Pros, which didn't have video graphics issues, but everybody thought they did, and it was nothing more than a tantalum capacitor on the board. Will Already they also there, be on there? Oh, sweet. Yep. Okay. Oh, I'm yeah. Just if, making it's sure. a, if it's a... Well, whether, it, whether it's fixable or not, it will mm-hmm. be on that website. Uh, okay. If it is fixable, it will include links to how you can fix it, where you can send it to fix it if you don't want to do it yourself. So uh, it should be pretty comprehensive. That's cool. Yeah, I, I remember I'm thinking of one I could probably click the contact link on and send this away. I think it was some of the uh, G4 iBooks or maybe it was the G3 iBooks. Uh, one of the, the white iBooks, they had VRAM issues where they were just like, stop working. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's cool to have a website that documents all this stuff because the second Apple is no longer required to put it on their website, it's gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the only yep. the only trace that's left behind is, like, Mac News sites that were covering it back in the day. So, yep, really, really cool resource. Thanks for sharing. All right, guys. Uh, I think I'm going to throw it over to Steve here next because I think you know more about this than we do. But, uh I guess the Apple Three has a birthday. Oh yeah, so it's almost forty years old, but it's not. It's thirty-nine years old. So that was released in May of nineteen eighty, um, and I honestly didn't know a lot about this machine until I I just stumbled upon one last year, um, and I did a little video about the profile hard drive and everything for that. If you want to check that out on Mac eighty four, but. Um, What's interesting about the Apple III is the more you read about it, the more it like sort of boggles your mind how it was ever released. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just one of those things. Go go check out the Wikipedia page for the Apple III. And, I mean, this thing was like a curse to begin with because uh, apparently they wanted it released so quickly that um, they designed the case before the board was completed. So... They basically designed the case for the computer, which is this heavy aluminum and metal enclosure, and they couldn't. They realized they couldn't fit all the components for the board in that case, so they had to use this very fine uh, design of traces, very small traces, and this was not a mature or a perfected process at that point. And so what would happen is this machine, which was in this case, would heat up, and those traces would, since they're so thin, they would either break or they would bridge themselves and cause problems. Um, and, you know, the thing would get so hot that the sockets that were 
you know, the chips that were socketed in would pop out and all this crazy stuff. There was a real time clock that never worked. And well, they didn't have fans in that one either, did they? No, yeah, it was, it was not, it was, I think, one of the first machines that Steve Jobs was like, no, I don't want a fan in it. And, you know, that would be the, probably the machine's doom. But, you know, they did have an Apple III Plus, which uh, revised some of these issues. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is the, the machine that you famously see a diagram for of. Uh, basically, to fix the Apple III is to reseat the uh, memory chips as you lift it six inches off of your desk and let go. And this, the force of the whole thing slamming down is <laughs> supposed to reseat the memory chips. That's what wow. I mean. a, we used to call a BFH, you know, a big <laughs> effing hammer. <laughs> so, it's like I mean, the old uh, monitors. Just smack it and see if it, uh, yeah. you know, if it works again. Well, yeah, this, don't get electrocuted. <laughs> you know, in the army, you know, we used to fix things like that. That was how. That was one of the thing, things was to basically slap it. We had an old radio called RT five two four, and it was basically one of the things is to lift it up about four or five inches and drop it. <laughs> to, I mean, to re to reseat cards. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the, in today's prices, this the Apple three. It looks like it uh, from Wikipedia. It says they're like. You know, adjusted for inflation, like thirteen thousand to twenty three thousand dollars. These were what? not cheap machines. Yeah, I mean, they, they so they went on. They, the introductory price was forty three forty to seventy eight hundred. But you know, so adjusted for inflation, that's a hefty so basically that's like the MacBook Pro of the <laughs> MacBook Pro right? sandwich. What? Yeah. <laughs> what are you buying in a MacBook Pro that is thirteen thousand dollars? No, no, I'm talking Jeez. about I'm talking about the the problems with it. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, let's it, see if it, that fixes a butterfly keyboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Steve Wozniak would later say that the the failure of it was that the machine was designed by Apple's marketing department and not, you know, by the engineers itself. So, it, it tried to orient itself as like a business professional computer, but you know, they were still selling the Apple II, and you know the. The Apple II went to outsell and, and outperform the Apple III. So, uh, well, did Waz you know, never have really anything, on? Did Waz have anything to do with the uh, development of the three? Uh, he did. Um, he did. I, I from me reading it, uh, he was working on. I think some of the disk uh, integration circuits on it. Um, here, here's a quote: uh, "We probably put a hundred million dollars in advertising, promotion, and research and development." into a product that was 3% of our revenues in that same time frame we think we could have done to imp- what we think we could have done was to improve the apple 2 or how much we could have done to apple to give us products in ibm's market that's steve wozniak from 1985 <laughs> so i'm sure I, I i'm just glancing at the article here i'm sure he had some input engineering wise on this machine um well, he was probably the prov- the original designer of it. I mean, come on, there's no fan. In if it. they let it go to yeah. market without a fan in it, they're all idiots. I well, no, that's, I, that's, 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 that's not that's not that's not Wozniak. Wozniak that's wanted Jobs. fans. Steve uh, Jobs insisted on the idea of having no fan or air vents in okay, order to make Steve the computer Jobs. run quietly. <laughs> that makes Jobs sense. would later push the same ideology all almost over all Apple products. As well, if you look at as he was on stage, he was an idiot when it came to computing. I don't oh, care yeah. what you say. It's yeah. He's he's like the politician that tells you how to mow your lawn, and he doesn't have a lawn himself. You know, you are holding he's it just wrong. Sitting in an office making up <laughs> stuff that doesn't know how it applies to the real world. See, let's put it this way: Steve Wozniak was the brains behind the operation, um, and Jobs was basically the marketer. We can't yeah. say that Wozniak is a genius because we see the current technology. Well, no, 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 no. Well, he, I'm he talking didn't. about. I'm he was talking good. About, He's I'm not talking a genius. About when <laughs> it came out, he Back was a in genius. The day, yeah, he was a genius in the early '80s. Yeah, it's nothing yeah. to do with the new crap. Well, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and to be honest with you, with that. today's stuff, he wouldn't be able to touch today's stuff. I mean, exactly. Yeah, it's it's so everything's all integrated, and it's you know he had he had the most fun of you know anybody if he was working on a board design and he was able to save a few chips here and there to save money by, yep. you know, these interesting convoluted circuits that he would design. But I thought Wozniak was the inventor of uh, let's make it smaller and let's not, uh, no, no, put a, he just, let's not cool it. Properly. Okay. Let's put it this no. way. When the, I know when the <laughs> Apple, when the Apple one first came out, 
it was Steve Jobs that decided to make all the chips in a row, make sure that everything was lined up perfect. Because he was, he <laughs> wanted surprise me. He wanted it to be perfection. The capacitors had to be like lined up perfectly. Yeah, you know, Wozniak could care less. He was like, as long as it worked. <laughs> he didn't yeah. care. He, Wozniak was all about the expansion. He wanted, you know, expansion slots and cassette ports and all this stuff on the Mac. And Jobs and did. The Apple IIs and, and Jobs oh, didn't. So okay. that was that was the, the sparring that kept happening is, you know, the engineers were behind Woz and they always were fighting for expansion. There's an excellent, excellent website and they have um, a, uh, a book as well. And it's called, as I'm stalling for time as I'm typing it in too. The, That's all right search here um it's called folklore.org f-o-l-k-l-o-r-e.org um and one of the people from the original macintosh team andy hertzfeld uh it's basically his stories and you can buy a book about it but most of the stories are on the website excellent excellent read if you're ever bored and just want to like you're going to go through this whole page it's excellent um these are like inside stories from like Apple back when, you know, the Apple II was around when they were making the Macintosh and all this stuff. It talks about like them trying to squeeze an expansion slot into the original Mac and Steve Jobs finding out and, you know, <laughs> them using creative <laughs> language to try and sneak things past him. And there's this excellent story of, you know, the old Twiggy drives from the Lisa. So they were supposed to have those in the Mac. And the engineering team knew that Steve Jobs wouldn't want the smaller compact floppy disks that Sony was making in the Mac. So they snuck somebody over from Snow from Sony and Steve Jobs came in the building. They had to hide the guy in the closet. So <laughs> there's some there's some excellent stories. I, I really I'm gonna paste it into the uh, the YouTube well, channel. I don't know if you've ever read that book, uh, Wozniak's biography. Uh, I yes. was yes. that is a good read too. That is an yeah. excellent read. Yeah, his his is an excellent biography, and it also has some great stories of this, like the little you know pranks and stuff like that. But also, you know, trying to develop these things under crazy timelines. But All right, next next time you say excellent, everybody in the chat has to do a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we'd be drunk. You're still on <laughs> Jay. You're still on like your name there. It doesn't change. Know, face. My phone. My phone is on my desk next to me. I'm soldering while I'm oh, doing okay. this. Well, no, yeah, you I mean, don't just want to, to show test. anybody your secret sauce there. I see how you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to, to wrap it up, how wherever I got away from the topic, but yeah, the no, Apple we're still on ended the topic. up being a, a failure. You know, it was introduced in May of 1980 and discontinued. The Plus model yeah, was discontinued in '84, so it was really short lived and it didn't really take off the way they envisioned. Which was, I mean, it had some interesting, you know, prospects of it that. That SOS or sauce system, as you're, I believe you're supposed to pronounce it, was was pretty sophisticated for its day. Um, but you know, I I guess they they incorporated that into other machines later on. Yeah, but yeah, they're they're valuable ones. They're they're rare and hard to find because uh, they did not sell well. Kind of like right. the lime green machines. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I love those. <laughs> All right, so. This is going to be a short night tonight, guys. We just don't have a whole lot. We lost a, a guest at the last minute, so that kind of threw us for a loop there as far as uh, stuff to talk about. Yep. Uh, so uh, we're going to go to our next one. And Are we this being is... nice and not saying his name? Come on. Yes, I'm being nice. I won't <laughs> say All right. Uh, all right. But anyways, we're going to go to uh, Match the Facts. <laughs> all right oh, we got a whole bunch of them in here so we're gonna this is a this is pretty much to get you guys to play along with us so uh as the viewers i'm gonna give a fact out and you gotta guess which one of us it is okay i'm only gonna do the ones of us that are here today so mike and greg will not be uh greg rutke that is uh will not be matched any of these facts oh so that makes it too easy yeah so it's only four <laughs> of us so it gives you a 25 percent chance of getting it right <laughs> so what, what i'm going to do is i'll read it out and you guys type in the chat who do you think it is and then uh we'll uh we'll tell you who it is there i'm not going to play the the theme music at this time i just don't <laughs> feel like doing that this time so first one <laughs> All right, this guy ran a live-action role-play management business. 
So who do you think, which one of us ran a live action role play management business? And for those that don't know, what is a, whatever that is. Role play? <laughs> yeah. I think role- if somebody explained the whole thing, then they would be ousted as the individual. So I think Maybe. it's basically uh, where you I say we role play it. live action. You know, you're you're basically like you ever see these the medieval things or whatever something similar. Oh, to that. like the um, uh, like the uh, uh, um, uh, Renaissance, Renaissance fair. fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind kind of. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So, has everybody answered already? Jay got a vote. Uh, once Rocky got a vote. Greg, everybody but me that got a vote. <laughs> okay. So I I will Greg, explain Jay it Rocky. because uh, All right, it we're going to go ahead to be me. The answer. Yep. <laughs> oh. It's me. I I did ho- I did own. I still kind of own a live action role play management company. And what live action role play is is going to be something like um, actually. D&D does not qualify for this, even though it's vaguely qualifying, but a game like uh, Vampire the Masquerade, uh, a good example is people will dress up in the characters that they create on their role play sheet, like, whoops, sorry, like they would (laughs) in, uh, sorry, I'm not used to having a little cord here in my way, Um, so uh, they will create their characters on a certain demographic sheet, etc., and then what they will do is we will all meet up in a park, and everybody will role play that out. Well, that has expanded with the advent of the internet. Now there's certain 3D chat clients, etc., like Second Life, IMVU, etc. And instead of having to be at a park, meeting up, everybody meets up and plays out their role play characters, like you would do in D and D with little, you know, character dolls and a map board. Um, you would meet up in live. Well, now you can meet up in person on the internet using 3D chat clients and do the same thing. And you play out these characters, you pretend to be that character. Uh, if your game involves roleplay dice for the moves and etc., you do it. Uh, in the case of what I did, we used what's called a T1 system, which was completely based upon uh, text and how you played it out. And then we used a hybrid T1 in my specific company. Uh, and you would actually do a combination of some three-dimensional animation and along with the text uh, information that you put in to Fancy. describe what characters. Yeah, it's mm. it's a lot of fun. It's actually quite a lot of fun. It's like a lot of work, too. <laughs> yes, that, is, that it is. It's, it's storytelling at its best. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're just going to the next one here. Next one. This guy has a twin brother. So which one of us has a twin brother? A doppelganger. Jeez. God, that's that scary thought that one of us has a twin out there. Yeah, right? <laughs> Any of us having a twin is just creepy. And would that, I guess, if there's an evil twin, then is one of us the evil twin or is the other one the, mm, the evil twin? That's, right? a good, that's a good question. It's a very good How question. How did we know? We'll give another 20 seconds. All right. Tim says Steve. <laughs> give a couple more votes in here. Brock, Brock says, says Jay. Jay. Noah says Steve. No, it says Steve. Mm-hmm. I'm just repeating. I sound like a twin. I'm repeating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ten more seconds, guys. Get your votes in. Who in here has a evil twin or a nice twin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am the evil mod pixie. Well, I'm one of the people involved in that channel. Yeah. All right. We'll go ahead and give the answer out. So which one of us is it? It's me. I'm a twin. <laughs> I, I might be the evil one. I don't know. Jay and I were talking about it. They were like, man, there's another Steve out there. <laughs> yeah. That's when I started locking my door. Yeah, he, we, <laughs> we don't look alike. I'll tell you that much. I, I look like my older brother and my twin brother. He looks like my younger brother. So I, I don't really look like him. Um, but so there's four of you. There's four oh, of us. Yeah. <laughs> my, my poor mother. <laughs> so yeah so you know there's i have a twin brother and uh yeah it's basically all i'm gonna okay. show publicly <laughs> which which one which one of you is older uh i i am older by two minutes uh, wow yeah your mom had so. to endure two minutes of trying to push another one out man yeah well, and I, I was supposed to be born uh <laughs> A few months after, so I was like a very premature intensive care baby for a while. So I had all wow. sorts of wires hooked up to me, and there's a photo of me somewhere 
uh, where I'm wearing a shirt and the shirt says like I'm a high tech baby. Look at my wires or something. <laughs> I have to find that because it's so. No wonder fitting. why you became a geek then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I had no choice. The shirt deemed it so from the moment I was born. So, yep. <laughs> Steve all right, guys, licked it. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. <he did. laughs> all right, next one, guys. Uh, this guy was a radio repairman. So, which one of us repaired radios? Which one of us can repair can remember what a radio is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the people that uh, the one person who wouldn't qualify in that category is not here today. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Rudy knows what a radio is. <laughs> you mean the thing with audio, but no. All right, Tim <laughs> says me. Get Tim a few more votes in here. Mm-hmm. Brock says me. <laughs> Noah says no, me. Noah's scratching his head trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Ten more seconds, guys, before we give up the answer here. Where's, uh, what's his name? Is he still in here? Who? Chase. Where's Chase? Uh, he know who it is instantly, I bet. <laughs> Alright, guys, here's the answer. That would be me. <laughs> uh, I, my first four years in the army, I was actually a radio repairman in the army. I I fixed old radios, believe it or not, with tubes in them. Cool, you know, so vacuum tubes and stuff. So, uh, somewhere, yeah, that was that's what I did my first four years in, and before I switched over to a new MOS. Um, basically, I was a parts changer. I kind of got tired of that i wanted to get more in depth and repairing the radios instead of parts changing because the army only shows you how to troubleshoot and to what they call pluck and chuck you pluck out an old bad uh card and you pluck a, you put a new one in hey this sounds like <laughs> apple pretty much <laughs> maybe that's where they got their business model from for as far yeah, as right? repair you know yep. who knows all right this next one can be a little bit, I don't know, it should be easy, but I don't know. Next one, this guy listens to mostly EDM, which stands for electronic dance music. So which one of us listens to mostly electronic dance music? I'm curious to see who gets this right. <laughs> Tim says Wait. Jay. Yeah. Daniel says rock. That's an invalid answer. <laughs> rock. <laughs> Rocky. 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 <laughs> I guess I don't look the type. So. <laughs> <laughs> they probably think you listen to smooth jazz. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Brock says me that, as well. You got to have that doubt, that deep voice. Oh, yeah. If I had my good microphone, I could do the, the trick here. But <laughs> All right, 10 seconds, guys. Get your votes in. You're listening to Mac Yak 103.7. <laughs> All right, who is the one that listens to dance music? That would be me. Jay! Yeah. Yeah, I have music one. that ranges yeah. every genre, every artist. Uh, I have terabytes full of music but while i'm working uh, which is pretty much all the time i prefer edm there's uh, no lyrics to distract just a nice beat to keep you awake and going and uh, that's my go-to pretty much you know what's funny jay you mentioned that because i knew when i was uh in europe there a lot of europeans listen to that type of music dude Grab grab any website. Go to top <laughs> top ten world's best DJs. They're all going to be Dutch. Yeah, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not, not on my not list. It. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not arguing. Yeah, I'm not arguing with you. Now, now today, do, do you sit still or do you groove to the music? That depends. To it. Uh, that depends. Uh, if I'm soldering, I sit very still. If I'm standing at my desk, I will bounce around a little. It now, if you want to see energy. Jay bounce around, just subscribe to his Patreon and, you know, you <laughs> there you go. Set up yeah. for, the, for the top Ooh. tier, you know. <laughs> yeah, I need to make a tier for that. <laughs> there you go. Live Solder and dance. That's, that's a new... Uh, hey, just wait new, till you start your darts up. Then you can start listening. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. 
You could be recording yourself on Twitch doing the board repair. Like, have one camera on <laughs> you standing there doing your thing, one yeah. on the board repair. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to leave the streaming of board repair to someone that already invested like 80 grand into the proper equipment to do it. <laughs> I'm That'd not going to bother. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're no All right, guys, that. next one. This guy still uses an Apple Image Writer 2 dot matrix printer to print out and mail letters. Who the hell still mails letters? Right? <laughs> I don't know, some old part. <laughs> One of us does. <laughs> well, I'm older than all you guys, so hey, you never know. Like printing I, them is print. one thing, but actually mailing them? That is. Yeah. <laughs> what? Hey, that two cent, you know. <laughs> the answers right. are coming in hot yeah. on this one. <laughs> Tim, Brock, Daniel, I'll say Steve. Give it about 10 more seconds. Get your vote Why in. Why anybody suspect this about me? I, I just don't put two and two together. Yeah. <laughs> it's appearances, man. It's appearances. <laughs> like, nobody would guess that you're a punk rocker. <laughs> yeah. Brock, Brock goes, are his twin. <laughs> yeah, it's either me or my twin. <laughs> All right, go ahead and uh, give out the answer. Who Who's that? Oh, it's obviously me. You all know <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, to so prove I, it, yeah, here we go. I got this Yay. in the mail this week. That is awesome. It took forever to get there, but and he still has yep. the uh, the the uh, tractor feed on it. Right? Yeah, yeah. That is <laughs> funny, awesome. funny story about that paper. I was uh, taking a little trip last June and just stumbled upon a thrift store. A thousand sheets of that paper for a whopping two dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's awesome. this huge ream of paper uh, what's interesting is it's white and it's like carbon copy so there's a white layer a uh, pink layer and a yellow layer so like yeah, so if, if anybody wants a see... copy of my printout 50 bucks <laughs> yeah, very, very rare <laughs> you, you, have to, you have to sell it so but i mean what i what i do honestly is i have a laser printer which is fine but uh sometimes I, I just need to we have a lot of utilities that we can't pay electronically online or they charge you a convenience fee so sometimes i have to write a bunch of information or type it um and close a check and drop it off at you know the municipality or whatever um or sometimes i have to include a letter with something and saying oh where do you live that you can't so. yeah what is, do what stuff is this, it, yeah, it, this um, village in the are mountains you that you live you, you, are you you'd, be, <laughs> you'd be surprised i'm not paying an extra five dollar <laughs> electronic processing feed for my water bill no thank you i'll i'll type in my my information print it out in a cheap ass stop matrix printer <laughs> and, and <laughs> next week all this guy is and, cheap and as hell <laughs> yeah so that's that's a given but but no, well, aren't I mean, we all? It's it's, uh, it's fun. Uh, I, yep. I mean, the the noise will wake you up. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's part of it. But, I bet your wife I yells mean, at you when you're printing, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, I, that's that's for another episode. <laughs> <laughs> I can only print when she's not home. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it gets pretty loud. But hey, yeah. I I I think it's fun. I and that ribbon is uh, probably as old as I am, and it's still working. And I have a thousand sheets of paper to go through. So there, there you, go. you go. All right, next fact here. I expect love letters once a week now. <laughs> <laughs> for the third tier of my Patreon, you could get love letters printed for you in triplicate. <laughs> love is not guaranteed. Yeah. Ooh. All right, next next fun fact. Uh, this guy has lived in three different countries. So which one of us has lived in three different countries? If anybody gets this wrong, you have to take two shots. <laughs> <laughs> or touch a CRT. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. After it's been plugged I'm in I'm leaving that minutes. to you. Yeah, yeah. If you want to take liability for that one, that's on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, up. Tim is saying me. I neither endorse some more votes. <laughs> Daniel saying Jay. Noah says me. Ten more seconds, guys. Ten more seconds. Brock says me. Neil says me. You're getting all the responses. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> they like you. I yep. don't look well traveled. And the answer is me. I was in the <laughs> army and I was stationed in Germany for five years total. Actually, twice in Germany because I was there for two years. I, then I came back to the states and went back for another three years. So I spent five years over in Germany. And then I spent a year in Korea, 
uh, in the Army, and most of the other time in the USA. So that's basically the three countries. Now, Jay has probably lived in a few separate countries, but I don't know if he lived in more than three. Yep. We got, so you- <laughs> we got Netherlands, the U.S., Germany, France, Belgium, and shortly the Czech Republic. So the answer oh, on he, this he question was beat. me because it said three <laughs> different countries, not five or six. <laughs> 27. Yeah. So, so I mean, Greg, I visited what? I visited more than that country, but I lived. In oh, yeah. Countries. Visited. Yeah. The list yeah. goes on. But oh, yeah. Is, is, and uh, I uh, once it becomes affordable, uh, you know, I might. Live on the moon for a while. Or <laughs> Mars. First interplanetary uh, member of Matt Yak. Yeah. And we're going to have a slight hand. delay to deal with during the streaming. But <laughs> I'll just run an Ethernet cable. <laughs> yeah, I see, I, I see Jay typed on this thing there. Uh, Jay has lived in more. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Greg, was there a, uh, a, a particular cuisine? Cu- uh, wow, I cannot... Damn, cuisine, cuisine. Was, cuisine. Was, there, was there a particular food, food. that you enjoyed <laughs> while stationed? Actually, over? I'm going to stop talking. Actually, Germany was the better place. I I love schnitzel. I love the German food. Schnitzel. You know, they they have fatty foods. That's why I have a belly now because <laughs> you know. Oh sure. <laughs> yeah, they the Germans believe in beer and brats. Okay. <laughs> Yes, that's Ein beer. See, Fit a lot right of people in. think. A lot of people, when they count beer, you know, count, <laughs> you go one, two. You know, in the states, two, three, four. Well, not over there. That, no. that is no. three in yeah. Germany and most European <laughs> countries because basically they, they start with the thumb. Okay, so if you ever go to a different country and count, you, you want one. Go like that. Don't say that because that means two. <laughs> <laughs> that was also, uh, and this is. Uh, this is actually fact. That was also a good way to get your head blown off during the war. Yes, it if was. You were, if you were a spy or <laughs> uh-huh. you infiltrated somehow, they would find a way in a conversation to make you count. And if you started with your index finger, you were you British were no or there. American. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. a scene, I believe it's in Glorious Bastards, which of yes. course is not historically accurate or anything. But yeah, that's <laughs> the little thing they included in that. Oh, count cool. correctly. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Make sure you count correctly because it's just little little things like that, you know. Uh, like in most Arab countries, you know, you you don't shake with the right hand. Okay, sure. and there's there's a reason for that because they use the right hand to wipe. Oh. And I'm talking about without toilet paper. Yeah, <laughs> you want to see? Greg, can I shake your hand real quick? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I mean, they wash their hand, but they consider it dirty, so you shake with the left hand. Yeah, you always, no shit. Yeah. Yeah, that not on that hand, Jack. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, it's just different cultures have different things, you know, and mm-hmm. that's just one of them, you know. But like I said, I like, I enjoyed the beer in Germany. The Germans make the best beer. I mean, it, it, no matter what. Uh if you're in Turkey, was my favorite. never ask to do a pinky promise in Turkey because that's the F, that's the uh, middle finger in Turkey. Uh, oh, good all right, guys. Just, just putting that out there. Yeah. Last fact <laughs> before we move on here. Um, let's see. This guy has been running AppleSerialNumberInfo.com since 2008. And if you guys get this one wrong, I'm going to have to hunt you guys down. <laughs> <laughs> No we'll stick his wife on, on you. There you go. Yeah. No <laughs> excuses wife on will this come one. for you. So, who has been running AppleSerialNumberInfo.com since 2008? Okay, there's no question there. On that. Yeah, I think I think this one's, <laughs> I think blown. this one's. If somebody says the wrong answer, you're just going to get shamed. It'd be like uh, the Game of Thrones. Shame, shame, shame. All right, reveal yourself. Yeah, reveal yourself. Show yourself. Come on. <laughs> oh, Meet me? the camera. Yeah. yeah I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Take we were ready for the answer. Yes, yes. we're doing the answer. Everybody say a J. Nobody said a <laughs> That would be me. Uh, started off as a little personal project in 2007. I was working for a service provider and uh, just needed a, a quick way to look up certain information so i made that site for myself 
and did everything in my power to keep it from being indexed by search engines and stuff like that. And of course, I failed, and uh, it kind of went from there. <laughs> so, so how, been, how uh, did you decode the first serial number? That was pretty tricky. Um, I found a guide. I have to make rice, but there's no pants. Where are all the pots and pans? You had you had no <laughs> internal help from the evil empire then. No, no. Even though at the time I had access to Apple systems as a service provider, you get limited access to order parts and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was not any help. So I found uh, I found a guide online of some guy that kind of worked on figuring it out, and I just kind of took it from there and figured out the rest. And then I had to redo it again. I think it was 2012 or 11. I don't know. But at some point, Apple went from 11-character serial numbers to 12-character serial numbers. Oh. And I had to recode the entire website to accommodate that. Sounds that sounds like fun. Yeah, it was not. <laughs> Daniel, Daniel's asking on here, how do you decode the new ones? The new ones? The, the current ones have been around for a couple of years now. Uh, the only thing is the build date. The extra added character is about the, the location where it was built and the build date. So if you pull up a new serial number on the website, um, it'll say this was built in the first half of 2015. And underneath that, it'll give you two month options because I haven't been able to figure out how to code it properly. <laughs> Ah, it says okay. first half is April, second half is September, and you just pick the one that it told you applies. Um, I still have that's to pretty it clever. Out. I, I actually used that years before I knew you, so that's it's kind of funny. <laughs> well, it's uh, slightly outdated. I, I've been very busy to put the appropriate amount of time in it to update it with all the latest info and stuff. But uh, it is uh, there's a lot of updates in the planning, so. Stay tuned. Now, I'm I'm curious. Is the um, is the Macintosh serial number like decoded format the same for like iPhone and iOS devices? Yes. Or do they follow a different? Oh, okay. No, it's the same. Yeah, I was wondering if they got tricky there or anything like that. Now I have do, a question. Do you, oh, is sorry. the server free to host? Because you know there are those people that think that uh, you know <laughs> hosting a server is just you know oh no. it's free. <laughs> Over the years, I've been kicked off of about five different website hosts uh, because they're like, yeah, 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 we'll take you on. Not a problem, not a problem. And about a month after I start hosting with them, they're like, yeah, this the amount of bandwidth and traffic is out of control. So either start paying us ridiculous amounts of money or uh, be gone. Bye-bye. <laughs> So. Do you are you able to track? I, I'm curious what the oldest serial number that you ever had inserted into your database was. Huh. You know what? I never thought about that. Because I'd be, I'm sure a lot of people like Uh-oh. me have put in like a 512k <clears throat> or anything like that. Like, do you do you keep records of that, or is it just like? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we yeah. yeah yeah. Okay, I have to switch over to LTE. My internet is dying. Uh, no, and I never actually thought about that. I think the oldest Max, the first Max that the website supports is the, the G3 Blue and White. So I got oh, okay. about a dozen of those. Uh, I do so, want to open it up to older hardware because as long as the serial number format works on the website, I can bring it back, I think, all the way to the classic. Oh, okay. So, That's cool. No, I just... To, go ahead. No, no, I just asked Steve's question. help with that at some point. <laughs> Noah as just much asked as I can what, help, I'll help. Yeah, Noah asked, what kind of bandwidth are you using? Are you using Google Analytics on the site to track visitors? No, I hate Google, and <laughs> I hate tracking. <laughs> <laughs> so the only tracking that happens is the one that's kind of built into the, to the web host uh, server, and it's basic stuff like how many gigabytes uh, a month, how many visitors a month, just basic stuff. It doesn't tell me operating system. It doesn't tell me screen resolution or any of that stuff. Well, that kind of segues into the next question that Daniel just asked. How much bandwidth does it use in a month? Uh, I'm doing roughly 400 gigabytes a month. Wow. Wow. That's a big and number. <laughs> seeing as the website is mostly text, that tells you something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, pretty I insane. Wonder- 
I wonder, um, and, and you don't have to answer. I'm just curious. Do you keep uh, tabs of like what the most popular looked up machines are, or anything like that? Or yes, yes, that okay, that's I do. cool. Uh, it that used would to be show that on the front page, but ah. uh, I took it away for some reason. That I suddenly don't remember why. But the script <laughs> is still active, so it'll take uh, the most looked up serial number and uh, show it on the front page as being a MacBook Pro or an iPhone or whatever. Oh, okay. So I might, yeah, I might it, shoot that back. Yeah, it'd be curious to see, like, what the oldest machine is, what the most common machine is, stuff like that, you know. Yeah, I can tell you, though, that the MacBook Pro far outweigh, that's like, I would say, almost say 75, 80% of all the traffic is MacBook Pro. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's uh, probably because they sell more of those than anything else. Yeah, and, well, and also you're, because you're my also website, from me. <laughs> the website doesn't support Apple Watch, because to be honest, I got uh, so freaking sick and tired of trying to figure out which band goes with which model, and it just drove <laughs> me insane. I don't think I'll ever support them. I might at some point, but well, uh, you don't have to put the band. I mean, the only thing you'd have to show is the watch, because the bands are interchangeable. I mean, you could put any band on it. I know, but I try to be thorough. Yeah, and I could see like the sport edition ones are technically a different skew, and they have different faces on them. Yeah. So you got the Nike Plus or something like that. Yeah, yeah, and or I, you got I'm, the the ten thousand dollar gold one. You know, <laughs> no, yeah. Well, I think I think actually on the bottom of the watch, it, yeah, it tells you the series at least. So you know, it's not like the Max where all you have is a serial number and a part number that Apple's uh, been on. using for eight years straight. <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah. mine does not because mine's the original. And oh. does not have a series number on there. I think I think after the after the original it said like series two or whatever because mine says series three on the back. So I know yeah. that that's. But yeah, what what we like like the, the amount of traffic uh, that the website generates creates uh, pretty sizable hosting bills every month. So that's why I had to start charging. You can you can look up two serial numbers a day, and you know if you do any more than that. You're going to have to pay for a package that allows you to do more. And I hate it. It, it always used to be free. But, you know, I got well, to pay these bills. Well, you got bills so. to pay. I mean, yeah. you yeah. have to. Yeah, and I mean, you, you're free. the one that engineered this. So, you know, your time is also worth money. You know? Oh, man. If, if I were to charge for my time, it would be a million dollars per search. <laughs> <laughs> out, of, out of the year, I spend a good two, three months on this website at least. No, I remember I'm, I'm, when he had to redo it this year, and you were spending quite a bit of time on it. Oh, oh my yeah. God. I had to upgrade the server. The, the PHP version was different. The SQL server was different. Well, didn't they, didn't they upgrade the uh, the actual server, and you had to no choice but to? Yeah, all the email. Uh, well, the server hosts a whole bunch of websites. Uh, and suddenly, everybody started contacting me saying, my email isn't working anymore. And then they told me, yeah, if you want us to upgrade the SSL certificates, you're going to have to upgrade your servers. It's like, you asshole, you couldn't tell me that. <laughs> you know, give me a heads up. <laughs> but no, apparently. <laughs> apparently not, yep. But it's all sorted now. Sorry, I'm just running around after. No, no, make that's some fine. Food. All okay. right, we're going to go ahead and move on here. Um, that's actually a pretty good little topic to end that uh, the uh, – facts there with and uh before i walked away i think that jim or tim uh had every answer right that he knows us very wow. well that, we that's a little to, creepy yeah that's right <laughs> i think you're <laughs> on it yeah go back to locking my doors again <laughs> <laughs> gotta lock up my printer now <laughs> yeah. all right we're gonna move over to since uh steve you gotta leave maybe a little bit early we're gonna go uh, ahead I, to your I'm section here okay. uh the steve's archive adventures yeah Take away. so thank you so um this was interesting so um i'm not i don't live too far from new york and i went into uh new york city with uh with some friends not long ago and there's a, a kind of a famous video game store called video games new york and has a big yellow awning and everything um, it's located near Astor Place, if you're familiar with New York. Um, and essentially, um, it's like this little hole in the wall store that's packed, and I mean packed with video games. Um, all generations, consoles, new, old. Yeah, it's, it's a good geeky place to hang out. Um, I used to go there a few years ago whenever I was in the city, and they were stupid expensive. And I mean, you know, 
anything that you could look at there was twice the price it was on eBay. It was really overpriced. Um, so when I went there recently, I had my hopes down low. I'm like, well, I, I'm not going to be able to afford anything. Everything's too crazy here. But actually, their, their prices are more reasonable. So I, I looked around in the store, and it, basically a lot of the stuff there is out of my price range, or I just don't have the interest in some of these higher-end items. But I found something that, that was interesting, and they had a stack of floppy disks that were just shrink-wrapped. So they were obviously someone's collection at some point. I have a bag here that I'm, that I'm opening. They were a little pricey. They were like $5 a stack. And Uh-oh, they, did we lose Jay? Oh. Uh, no, no, I'm I here. Still, I'm okay. still here. So they didn't were, want to show him making food. <laughs> they were a little <laughs> pricey. I mean, I, I would prefer to have spent less. But some interesting things here. So they, some were obviously from an Apple II because, you know, they have Apple II markings on them. Uh, I have I've, I just bought a few. I didn't buy all of them there. Um, this is like copies of software or whatever. Um, some of them aren't labeled or some of them just have like a number on it, like two. <laughs> so I have no idea what's on this. Um, they did have some, it's a uh, virus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did have, wouldn't be surprised. Uh, they did have a uh, five and a quarter discs, but when I was looking through those, there was mostly uh, Commodore stuff and they wanted $30 just for like this box of random discs. And I asked them to open it cause it was all shrink wrapped. You couldn't even see the discs inside because of like the smoke colored disc holder. And it, it, it looked, it didn't look like anything that was rare or anything like that. Um, we have a uh, Mike's disc apparently. So maybe this belongs to our Mike. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but um, it's interesting because although some of them are Apple related, you know, there's Apple works and stuff. So these um, are for an Apple II. Uh There are some for an MSX computer. If some of you guys know what those are. What is an um, MSX? So it, I believe it was like a um, a late eighties uh, video game. Uh, let me look it up real quick. Um, yeah, home computer by um, by Microsoft. Huh, interesting. Oh, is that like a collaboration? So Microsoft of Japan and Sanyo. So it was like basically like a, an eight bit uh, computer. Um, so. Uh, there's some software that's just for that, and it's all in uh, Japanese and such. So, be interesting to see. If, if I, I don't even know if I could read half of these discs, but I mean that's it's kind of the fun of just looking around and seeing if you could, you know, have you know what's around there. This is an interesting one that at first glance looks like it's crayon like drawn or whatever, but, but it's there's actually another printed. one. Yeah, there's another one. So I think these are like. Um, you know, part of like an Apple collection or something, or maybe it's cool. just very neat coloring, but there's two that look very identical, which me- leads me to believe they are. Is that the stain same. on the, uh, on the disc or is that? Yeah. One of, okay. one of them is stained. Um, but yeah, so that, that's what made it look authentic cause it's so old, but yeah, there's, there's four of them with the, with rainbow Apple labels. So when I saw that, I'm like, all right, I have to get some of these. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm sure some of these are already archived. Um, and then there's some cool ones like Tetris for the MSX here. So I don't know uh, too much about some of these other 8-bit machines. I know I could probably image the Apple II discs, but uh, some of the others I probably need that hardware to mess around with. But anyway, I thought it was a pretty cool thing to find. You don't always see floppy disks, especially at thrift stores. They usually just toss them. Um, even the Goodwill, for whatever reason, they have some policy that they actually will throw away all the discs because they're worried about personal information, uh, so which is ridiculous. <laughs> what do they do? They just throw them in the garbage? I think they just destroy throw them. them. Yeah, there was... Um, there so was you could dumpster episode. dive and get them. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know exactly like the process, but I know that um, uh, LGR, the Lazy Game Reviews guy, did a video when he was thrifting, and he found a, a floppy disc holder, and there was like one disc of doom in there. And he was like going on a rant about how they throw out all the discs. And I talked to somebody at Goodwill. They're like, yeah, we usually do that. And I'm like, why? I think that's terrible. But yeah, you never know what you're going to find. So I'm, I have a bunch of discs to sort through. So like I need more well, things to archive. For. Probably because <laughs> I hate to say it, but you know, you got people that do, you know, kitty porn or whatever else that might be up there. They should oh, be caught. You never know. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it, yeah. There, I guess there's this whole liability thing, or personal exactly. Thing, and you don't want you, know? and you don't want you know the store selling that and then to saying, accidentally oh, wait, harbor just, that. Yeah, you just sold this illegal yeah, well, stuff. Un- and- un- unfortunately, I I think they're sort of misguided there because um, there's been a lot of questionable DVD disc content at Goodwills that I've stumbled across. <laughs> uh, I think those would be much more problematic than what's on a old 800 kilobyte disc but okay (laughs) well james i've actually heard a lot of people talk about goodwill going and finding good computers and stuff there yeah they sell it really high price too yeah see that's that's the thing like the one by me they do not have computers some will actually refurbish computers and sell parts and organize them like if that store knows what they're doing they'll actually organize stuff and it'll do a good job of it um, a Goodwill just opened up that 20 minutes from me. That is like a brand new location. It's beautiful. They have a nice setup and everything, but they don't do that. It's just whatever they have, they have, and they don't sell the computers. They actually, I think they partner with Dell and they donate them and do whatever with them. I don't know, but I remember I dropped off something to Goodwill and there was a pile of computers. I mean, a pile and sticking out was uh, a PowerBook SCSI adapter and I, I'd like ask the guy if I could have it. He's like, no, I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, like it, yeah. like I could use that cord, and nobody else would know what it's for. <laughs> well, just to give a heads up for those that are curious about that stuff, actually, I found it uh, through someone else. Goodwill now puts a lot of that computer stuff on the internet, and they sell it at auction. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. It's a for profit, like anything else. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's, and you know what's funny is they're making uniform. they're making 100 percent profit because the people donate it. It's not for profit. They do actually put it to good programs, so we can't completely dog them on it. But. <laughs> yeah, we can. You try to sell <laughs> oh, I can because I, I want those computers. Bucks. Exactly. I'm dogging you for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're moving on here. All right, Rocky, you're up next with the uh, Mount Olympus challenge. So, how is that going? Well, we haven't had a whole lot of new entries. Um, oh, I knew I, I was forgetting something. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You I'm haven't sorry. taken over the bottom spot. You know, the bottom spot is still owned by James. James is still the leader at the bottom. He has I'll achieved. get you, James. <laughs> Somebody needs to come take him out because uh, he's still leading there at 150 with his iBook G3 SE Graphite. How so, long did it take to run that? <laughs> two hours, I think. <laughs> yeah, only two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> So somebody, we're trying to go for no, what would be the machine that could actually achieve one on that, a score of one. And uh, we still have the current reigning leader, which uh, is, let me look on my list. It is David. David W. still has the reigning leader spot on the machines. He is still the uh, king of Olympus. I think he, uh, he's using a four or five comma one. Maximum CPU, maximum RAM, mm-hmm. good graphics card in it, SSDs. <laughs> it was pretty tricked out. Yeah, but somebody, you know, if we could get some Hackintoshes in there to nope, try to beat Hackintosh don't it. count. Yes, it does. No. <laughs> it counts. It counts. I That's think it team. should. It should because we need to see, can it be dethroned? <laughs> We haven't even uh, seen the newer Mac Pro in there to dethrone at this. Six let me duct tape the- all my old Mac Pros together and see what happens. Yeah, let me uh, let me <laughs> put That's a cluster the other thing on we that. Need to see. <laughs> we need to see it. We need to see a cluster. Let's see a cluster, you know, performance grid because if we can Jay, get up there, you have your X serves. <laughs> there you go. Hey, if if only you. they made Geekbench for cluster computing, then I could run. Oh. That's your excuse? Come on. <laughs> Come up with well, that. Have you, you, it. <laughs> have you tried running Geekbench on it at all? Yeah, and it'll just use the host machine. Ah, uh, you got to figure it out. We can change up the software if we need to, but. Oh, sure. Because I code so well. <laughs> 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 Let me just modify Geekbench to uh, use cluster computing. Okay. We'll figure it out, or we'll use a different software if we need to, but. <clears throat> I think somebody can figure it out. We gotta, we gotta get a new reigning champion in here. We gotta. Push uh, don't it worry, out. I'll be, I'll be the lowest. I, I'm, that's my goal. <laughs> You're gonna try to dethrone James. James, that's is reigning. Uh, I can do it. Don't worry. I'm gonna. You know, I still have my kidneys. I'm gonna sell one of them to afford the new Mac Pro, and then I'll be up top. 
There you go. Speaking of new Mac Pros, that uh, they just came out with an article about that, and it's. I'm I'm just hoping that it's something. It's not like the trash can. To be honest with you, but that's just me. Uh, someone did None a render. Uh, I forgot which Facebook group it was, but it was a pretty cool render. Steve, was that you that did that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't take credit on that. Starting rumors. It was still <laughs> not. It as was still. Expandable. It was still a picture. Somebody took a phone picture of a screen like yours did. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're stealing what, my craft. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's just, uh, <laughs> You it's, sit not there a, it's not a five comma one. It only has three PCI slots and a whole bunch of Thunderbolts, I think. But it's better than the trash can, that's for sure. Yeah, but it depends on what modular, what they mean by modular. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the question. Is it going to be truly modular, like a cheese grater, or is it going to be modular, like we're just going to stack a bunch of uh, Mac minis know. on top of each other? And exactly, that would suck. Yeah, totally. Without the vacuum cleaner involved. All right, Rocky. Now I don't have an overlay for you here, but uh, no go ahead and talk about your gaming. Okay, game of the week. Oh, God, it's starting up, so that's going to completely block my screen. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> well, I was going to get a picture, and then I forgot this game actually blocks the screen. Um, unbeen, unknown to many is. Come on. Hold on. I'm trying to get the screen off. Come on! <laughs> Well, you can tell we it. spend a lot of time preparing for this <laughs> oh, show. We are I was only busy this week, but yeah. Um, no, the game is uh, Dream Pinball 3D. It's actually, if you're on Steam, which is where I would recommend to go look for it, it actually shows up as only being a PC game. But the reality is, even on Steam, it will install the Mac version. And it's actually quite a good game. I don't have a rating for it, and it doesn't require a whole lot in the realm of computer. If you can run 10.6, you can run this game. Uh, it does require an Intel processor. Of course, I ran it on my heavily modded uh, Mac Pro. So let me pull it up here. If you're into pinball games, it is definitely a very good option. Let me load it up. Sorry, I don't have a video. I haven't had time to do a video this week. Um... <clears throat> It's going to load eventually. Come on. Load. God. That's this is what problem. I was sitting through. Uh, uh, yeah, you got to load all the... It's the load screens. It's actually, it loads right away. I'm running this on SSD, so... Do, do, do. So, it loads up. Loads up very quick. Oh, it looks like a pinball machine, almost. Exactly. It does a great job of it. And actually... That looks the... fun. I play it. It is. It's a lot of fun. I, I enjoy this game quite a bit. I play it every once in a while. Uh, when I'm in the mood for pinball, it's very well done. It's been on it's been on both platforms for a long time. Can you make um, it where you could see the whole table or the whole um, instead of it moving around? Because I mean that would make me dizzy as hell trying to f follow on the ball like that. You think it would? But I know it, it some of them you dizzy. can. I don't know if this one can honestly. I haven't tried that because I don't mind the table movement. You get used to it, so. But it's it's pretty easy to do. I mean, it's just a classic <laughs> pinball game. Yeah, there you go. Sis. But yep, that's pretty much the game of the week. It's a very good game. I would give it a three to four out of stars because it's it's well established. No, it's puck. Very good. Excuse me, Remember, stars. What is this about? Stars? Puck, sorry, puck. Sorry. Wow. Forget his own rating system. I know. Oh, I'm man. I'm out of the loop. And, and we have to remind him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what happens. So how many pucks are we getting this week on that one? Three to four. It, it, I couldn't call it a five. It's not that good because it's older. but And they did a good job with it. It's just it's not customizable in a way that would be make it a five. It needs a little bit more. But for its era, yeah. Three to five. Three to four. Sorry. All righty. <laughs> so now that's... I mean, we're we're basically trying to stall for time here, guys, because we're. we're I, I found. We're, uh, don't just wrap it up if we're done. <laughs> I just wanted to show I, one of these copies. This guy went above and beyond Dude, trying to cool. recreate the uh, the wow. logo with his pen. There, print shop <laughs> for the yeah, Apple Two GS. Even that. yeah. So that this is pretty neat. And here you go, Rocky. If you want to read some Japanese for us. Uh. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> that's a uh, oh, that's Harry Harry or, or hentai or whatever it is. I Harry think it's something. Compile was a magazine. Anime, believe, read manga. So there's uh, that. Those will be interesting to see. Apparently, these are DOS formatted, so a PC should be able to read them. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next segment is what were they smoking? <laughs> and the first thing we got here is somebody brought. Oh man, that thing is nasty. I didn't put this link in, but I'll go ahead I and did. post it here. Uh, this is the link. So if you guys want to go look at it, yeah, uh, and vote on it. Should I go pick this up? <laughs> God, oh my this thing, Lord. the yeah. keyboard. I wouldn't want to touch the keyboard. Oh, it looks like it's yeah. been a heavy it's smoker's been home something. There. But five hundred and fifty dollars for a two C. And it doesn't even have like the original monitor. It's like a knockoff keyboard, a third party mouse. The only thing that's cool is it has the accessory box, but it looks like it has like been dipped in water or something. Dude, the real thing question takes... is: Has Steve Jobs licked it? <laughs> probably. Well, probably the reason why it's turned so yellow. <laughs> um, I mean, there's like a stain on the accessory kit box, uh, but he's got all the accessory kit stuff. So that's cool. Yeah. But again, five hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, for the computer itself. In working condition, if it's recapped, I, I'm guessing maybe a hundred. I don't know, but that that thing's going to take some serious retro oh, writing. Yeah, so <laughs> like this, I think is at least you know four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars over. But yeah. you should be paid for this. I, mean, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy that setup for a hundred bucks. That's a hard no for me because of the condition that's in. Maybe fifty yeah. tops. <laughs> I wouldn't take it if they gave it to me for free. That's disgusting. <laughs> Oh, who knows? Maybe the inside's nice. But Steve Jobs peed on it. That's why it's yellow. <laughs> oh, God. All right. And here's the next one. I mean, we got two of them here, so we'll just go ahead and do both of them. But here's the next one. I think, did you post this one too, Steve? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This one. This is That's in another my, my home state. <laughs> marketplace. This is what I'm dealing with when I try and find old Max. So when some of you guys comment on my YouTube videos going, oh, you were lucky finding that. You know, yeah, I was. Because look at look at this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Pick a dilly. Well, I mean, the, the computer looks clean. I mean, it doesn't look yellowed. Yeah. No, it's it, uh, this is actually in great condition. But the image writer, but the absurd. price, yeah. I mean, it doesn't look yellowed at all. It looks like it works. This, because Yeah, this I would say... I don't know, 200 bucks, maybe a little higher, depending on, you know, what uh, it's worth to you, obviously. It's all about what it's worth to you. Exactly. And being that it's a 2C, uh, it, has, it has what looks like the monitor stand, but it's a different monitor. Well, it is so an Apple monitor, the, it looks like. Right? Yeah, but it's not the uh, color, and it's not the uh, green screen monitor. No, it's a so, color monitor, it looks like. Yeah, it's a color monitor. Um, and the image writer, I wouldn't pay much for that because there, you could, I, I can't tell you how many I've stumbled across. But I mean, yeah, yeah I mean that's not too bad, but the price is insane. I mean, ugh. yeah, seven fifty. <laughs> he's probably smoking some some serious crack there. To <laughs> yeah, well, he's in New Jersey, who knows what he's getting? He's probably yeah. drinking some of the water. Too. <laughs> All right, so that guys is the what were they smoking this week? <laughs> so, guys, uh, we got any questions, comments for us, anything like that before we wrap this up? I got one. How many more people are going to get on Discord? Because we need more people on there. <laughs> yeah, Discord is where it's at. Dang right. So, let me go ahead and pull that up if you guys want. But here is our Discord channel. So if you want to, right after the show tonight, come out and hang out with us. I probably won't be because ha- I'm starving right now. I want to go eat. He's a funny <laughs> daddy. Oh, let me just add a topic right now and we can talk about that. Uh, <laughs> I, have the, I have the button to turn off the stream here. Because <laughs> none of you guys want to actually do the streaming. 
I want to. <laughs> my internet sucks. Let me just plug in my, uh, my Power <laughs> Mac G5 and let it try and render all this. <laughs> We'd see like one frame every five seconds <laughs> if you're lucky. Yeah, you, you've seen me trying to stream my dart. It, it ain't pretty. <laughs> uh, yours is pretty good, actually. So, uh, Jay, I think Jay's holding out on us, you know. <laughs> Maybe. <If> you, <laughs> but, guys, there's our Discord there. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Tell your friends about it. Tell tell your friends, hey, we're here. We want to try to get some more folks on here. Uh, we are trying to get guests on here. Uh, we don't have anything firmed up yet, but we are going to get some pretty big name guests on here, hopefully soon. So just keep a watch on the Mac Yak uh, Discord, and also we have a Mac Yak Facebook page. Make sure you like and support that as as well. Um, Check out all the description info in the links in the description. They should already still be there because I copy and paste them every week. So they all were th- are already there. So, oh, and then Jay comes back on video. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right the before end. the end. So, guys, uh, it's been fun. Uh, this will be our shortest one, I think, yet since yep. we started this. Uh, we normally oh, yeah, well, last... sometimes life gets in the way. We've all been yeah. busy this week, so. Oh yeah, exactly. So, take care, guys, and hopefully we'll see you guys next week uh, when we uh, do this again. And on Discord see you next time. Yep. Yeah. And on, on Discord. Discord. And on Sunday nights we do UT sometimes, so make sure you're there as well. And anybody can organize to do it any time during the week. You just got to yes. join the PPC Gaming Lounge. I will exactly. always try and kill right you right there. there on UT. Right there. Right there. <laughs> Jay right will there. too. <laughs> oh, there, there. <laughs> All right, guys. Catch you later. Have a good one. Thanks for hanging out.